in heaven give us this day our daily bread forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us you know some temptation but deliver us from the evil one in Christ Jesus our Lord for thine is the king the power and glory forever and ever amen I have sinned forgive me
us hear us help us and accept the supplications and prayers of his sins for that which is good in our behalf at all times and to keep the life and standing of our honored father the archbishop Bob about our can and his partner in the liturgy our father the bishop of Yusuf and forgive us our sins Lord have mercy. therefore we ask and entreat your goodness O lover of mankind grant us to complete this holy day and all the days of our life in all peace with your fear all envy, all temptation, all the work of Satan, the counsel of wicked men, and the rising up of enemies hidden and manifest, take them away from us and from all your people and from this church and from this your holy place. But those things which are good and profitable do provide for us, for it is you who have given us the authority to trade on serpents and scorpions and upon all the power of the enemy. Sorry, Emon, 
Bishops, our fathers, the bishops, our fathers, the hegumens, our fathers, the priests, our brethren, the deacons, our fathers, the monks, and our fathers, the laymen, and for the full repose of Christians, the Christ, our God, may repose all their souls in the paradise of joy, and we too accord mercy unto us and forgive us our sins. Graciously, O oh Lord, repose all their souls in the bosom of holy fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, sustain the green pasture besides the waters in the paradise of joy, the place out of which you grave sorrow and the groaning have fled away in the light of your sins. Raise up their bodies also on the day which you have appointed according to promises, which are without lie. Grant them the good things if you promise that which are eyes not seen or ear heard, neither have come upon the heart of man. The things which you God have prepared for those love your holy name, for there is no death for your servant but departure. Even if any negligence or headlessness has overtaken them since the world of this world. Oh, God has a good one and the lover of mankind. Report. Gracious you. Graciously, O accord, O Lord, to repose and forgive them, your servant, the Orthodox Christians who are in the whole world, from sunrise to sunset, and from north to south, everyone by his name, according to his, his name, and everyone according to her name, O Lord, repose them and forgive them. For no one is pure and without blemish, even though his life and earth a single day. As for those who are no hearty, can repose them, and maybe they were worthy of the kingdom of the heavens. As for us all, grant to us our Christian perfection that were pleasing to you, and they give them unto us a share in her ten with all. Graciously, I call, Lord, to keep us this night without sin. Blessed are you, Lord, God of our Father, and exceedingly blessed. Let your mercy, O Lord, be upon us according to our hope in you. For the eyes of everyone wait upon you. For you give their food in due season. Hear us, O God, our Savior, the hope of all the region of the earth. And you, O Lord, keep us safe from this generation forever. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. Blessed are you, O Lord, make me to understand your commandments. Blessed are you, O Lord, enlighten me with your righteousness. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Despise not, O Lord, the works of your hands. You have been my refuge from generation to generation. I asked the Lord and said, Have mercy on me. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against you. Lord, I have fled unto you. Save me and teach me to do your will. For you are my God, with you is the fountain of life. In your light shall we see light. Let your mercy come unto those who know you, and your righteousness unto the upright in heart. 
To you belongs blessing, to you belongs praise, to you belongs glory. O Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, existing from the beginning, now and forever and ever. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord and sing praise unto your name, O Most High. Holy God, holy might, holy immortal, who was born of have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy might, holy immortal, who was crucified for us, have mercy upon us. Glory to the Father and Son, the Holy Spirit, now and ever unto the age of all ages. Amen. Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, forgive us our sins. Lord, forgive us our iniquities. Lord, forgive us our trespasses. Heal them for the sake of your holy name. Our Father, brethren, have fallen asleep. Lord, repose their souls. For you are without and you have mercy on us. For yours, the glory, the dominion, and triple holiness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Bless us. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us the our day. In Christ Jesus, our Lord, for thine the kingdom, power, glory forever and ever. Amen. Can be a Christos, he so's been true, Samin, Alleluia, and share in it in Tior, O Theith, O Abit, Men, O Toyn, Barthenus, and Seon, even, Timas, not it, Mavin, Be Christos. Share it, it was me, Sinon, in Bioin, in Taif, me, Be Christos, been not it, Barthenus, O Am. Ti Parthenos Mariam, ti Theotokos Ethoem, ti Ebrostatis Eten Hoten, te Ebgenus en te ti Metromi. Shirene on ti Barthenos, ti Oro Emmin Ali, ti Ni Shereb Shushon te Ben Genos Ari Enkfonan in Emmanuel. سبح ما رحمك يا ربي لا أبد أبد ومن جيل إلى جيل بفمي أخبر بحق اجعلني مثل العشار الذي اخطا اليك وطرات علي وغفرت له خطايا اجعلني مثل اللص الذي صلب عني منك واعترف بك هكذا قائلا فأنت يا مخلصي قبلت إليك اعتراف وترافت علي وأرسلته إلى الفردوس أنا أعرف أنك صالح رؤوف ورحيم أذكرني برحمتك إلى أبد الأبد
لنك لا تشام او تلخاتي مثل ان يرجع ويحيا ترى افعال ضعفي ولا تنظر الي بغضب أسألك يا مخلصي فلتدركني ما رحمك لتخلصني من الشدائد المضادة لنفسي لكن يا رب اصنع معي مثل اهل نينوى الذين تابوا فغفرت لهم خطاياهم من أجل هذا أطلب إليك أيها الرب الإله مخلصي لا تحاكمني أنا الضعيف الخاطي Irim sol selinti parthi nos mariyat Irim sol selim mariyam Khinni fi owit saib shoy sa owi Namim bismin ritis tovhe mufiri gun Solomon Moti Ero and Skin Bigo and Tenigo Jetasoni Awata Ishferi Tabuli Semiro Salim. Shirene onti parthe nosti oro emmi nalithi ni shirib shushon te bengeno sari egfo nanin emmanu خير رئيس السمائين هو الأول في الطقوس الملائكية يخدم أمام الرام وتكمل الأثمار بتلبات ميخائيل لأنه قريب إلى الله يسأل عنا فلنسبح ونمجد ونسجد للثلث القدوس الموسى والدائم إلى الأبد
Sophien Thor is on Segon Henimat, Chosi Tarek in Kito, Oten Chosen Nefteren Tithio Toko, Set Oem, Parthenos and Seyoniven. Serene oti parete nosti oro emi na litini Sereb shushon te penge no sari eg fonan in emenu il We exalt you, the Mother of True Light. We glorify you, Saint Theotokos. We have brought forth one to save the whole world. He came and saved our souls. Glory be to our Master, our King, Christ, the Plight of the Apostles, the Crown of the Martyrs. Forgiveness of sins. We proclaim the Holy Trinity in one Godhead. We worship Him. We glorify Him. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Bless us. Amen. We believe in one God, God the Father, the Pantocrator, Creator of heaven and earth and all things seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all ages, light of light, true God of true God, begotten not created, one essence with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men for our salvation came down from heaven, was in kind of the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and became man, who was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate, suffered and was buried, third day he rose from the dead, according to the scriptures, ascended to the heavens, he sits at the right hand of his Father, is coming again his glory to judge the living and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. Yes, we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, proceeds from the Father, the Father and the Son's worship and glorify, spoke by the prophets, one holy Catholic apostolic church, we confess and baptism for the remission of sins. Then go shtevon chayet hen ti anastasi senteni eremu ot nembi on chen God have mercy upon us, settle mercy upon us, have compassion upon disciples and holy apostles, many prophets and righteous men have desired to see the things you see and have not seen them, and to hear the things you hear and have not heard them. But as for you, blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. May we be worthy to hear and to act according 
Dear Holy Gospels, to the prayers of the Lord's Pray for the Holy Gospel. Lord, have mercy. Remember also our Master, those who have bidden us to remember them in our supplications and prayers, which we offer upon to you, O Lord our God. Those who have already fallen asleep, repose them. Those who are sick, heal them. For you are the life of us all, the salvation of us all, the hope of us all, the healing of us all, and the resurrection of us all. Salmo Sudavid Gua Lilwaya Ya Rabbu Ilahu Khalansi Listen to the Holy Gospel, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew the Evangelist and the pure disciple. May his blessing be with The Psalms of our teacher David the prophet, may his blessings be with us all. Amen. O Lord, God of my salvation, 
I have cried by day and in the night before you. Let my prayer come in before you. Incline your ear to my supplication. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord of hosts, our Lord God, Savior and King of us all, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, to whom is glory forever. The scribes and Pharisees who were from Jerusalem came to Jesus saying, Why do your disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they do not wash their hands when they eat bread. But he answered and said to them, Why do you also transgress the commandment of God because of your tradition? For God commanded, saying, Honor your father and your mother, and he who curses father or mother, let him be put to death. But you say, Whoever says to his father or mother, Whatever profit you might have received from me has been dedicated to the temple, is released from honoring his father or mother. Thus you, may, thus you have made the commandment of God of no effect by your tradition, hypocrites. Well, did Isaiah prophesy about you, saying, These people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, and in vain they worship me teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. Then he called the multitude and said to them, Hear and understand, not what goes into the mouth defiles a man, but what comes out of the mouth, this defiles a man. Then his disciples came and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this saying, but he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone, they are blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind leads the blind, both will fall into a ditch. Then Peter answered and said to him, Explain this parable to us. So Jesus said, Are you also still without understanding? Do you not yet understand that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and is eliminated? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart and they defile a man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile a man. Glory. To God for ever. Je peignote très ni fi o i maref tovo en je bekarah.
Again, let us ask God, the Pantocrator, the Father of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ. We ask and entreat your goodness, O lover of mankind. Remember, O Lord, the peace of your one only holy Catholic and Apostle. Oh, hey, for the peace of the one holy Catholic and Apostolic Orthodox Church of God. Lord have mercy. This which exists for the end of the world to the other. Remember, O Lord, our only patriarch and the Father, the Archpriest, our Lord the Second, and the spiritual brother. The Patriarch of Antioch, Alamant Yusuf Rhyme, and his partner, John Father, Bishop Abba Yusuf. Archbishop Bob Abba to Adra the Second, Bob and Patriarch and Archbishop of the Great City of Alexandria, and his special brethren, the Apostolic Liturgy, the Patriarch of Antioch, Marcus Yusuf Rhyme, and the Patriarch of Rich Abun Antonius, and for his partner, the Apostolic Liturgy, our father, the Bishop Abba Yusuf. And for our Doxy Bishop, Lord have mercy. Keep them secure for us for means and peaceful times. Remember all the salvation of this holy place, every place, every month, all the Father. Pray for the salvation of the world and of the city of ours and of all cities, districts, islands, and monasteries. And Lord have mercy. And every city and every country and the villages and all their adornment. And save us all from fame and plague, earthquake, drowning, fire, captivity by the barbarian, the sword of stranger, and the rising above heritage. Lord have mercy. Accord, the Lord, the air of the heaven, the fruits of the earth this year to bless. Pray for the air of the heaven, the fruits of the earth, the trees, the vine, and every fruit bearing tree in all the world. Let the Christ our God may bless them, bring them to perfection in peace with our harm and forgive us our sins. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Praise them to their measure according to your grace, give joy to the face of of the earth may as far as be abundantly watered and this fruits be plentiful prepare it for sowing and harvesting and manage our lives as deemed fit bless the crown of the year with your goodness for the sake of the poor of your people the widow the orphan the traveler the stranger and for the sake of all of us who entreat you and seek your holy name for the eyes of everyone wait upon you for you give them their food in due season deal with us according to your goodness so you will give food to all flesh Fill our hearts with joy and gladness, that we too having sufficiency in everything always may abound in every good deed. Lord have mercy. The Father of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, we ask and entreat your goodness, O lover of mankind. Remember, O Lord, our assemblies, bless them. Pray for this holy church and for our assembly. Lord, have mercy. Grant that they may be to us without obstacle or hindrance, that we may hold them according to your holy and blessed will, 
houses of prayers, houses of purity, houses of blessings. Grant them to us, O Lord, and to your servants who will come after us forever. The worship of idols utterly uproot from the world. Satan and all his evil powers trample and humiliate them under our feet speedily. The offenses and their instigators abolish. Let the dissensions of corrupt heresies cease. The enemies of your holy church, O Lord, as at all times now also humiliate, strip their vanity, show them their weaknesses speedily, bring to not their envies, their intrigue, their madness, their wickedness, and their slanders which they commit against us. O Lord, bring them all to no avail. Disperse their counsel, O God, who disperses the counsel of Ahithophel. Lord, have Arise, O Lord God, let all your enemies be scattered, and let all who hate your holy name flee before your face. But let your people be in blessing, thousand of thousand, and ten thousand times ten thousand, Doing your will, our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Christ Jesus, our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In pe Christus, Isus ben Shuis, in opion so kirie, in opion so kirie, O Master, Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son and Logos of God the Father, who has broken every bond of our sins through his saving and life-giving sufferings, who breathed in the face of his holy disciples and saintly apostles and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. They also now, our Master, through your holy apostles, have given grace to those for a time labor in the priesthood in your holy church to forgive sins upon the earth and to bind and to lose your bond of iniquities we ask and entreat your goodness O lover of mankind for your servants those who bow their heads before your holy glory dispense unto us your mercy lose every bond of our iniquities if we have committed any sin against you knowingly or unknowingly through anxious heart or in deed or in word or from faint heartedness O master who knows the weakness of men as a good one and lover of mankind O oh God, grant us the forgiveness of our sins. Bless us, purify us, absolve us, and all your people. Fill us with your fear, straighten us under your goodwill. For you are our God, and glory, honor, dominion, and worship are due to you together with your Father and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and the age of ages. Amen. Amen. Fadal Estreya.
احنا البايبل السادي النهارده هتكون من مزمور 44 لو عايزين تطلعوه عشان تتابعوا معانا مزمور In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Uh, each psalm actually has a title, and a t- the title of this psalm, to the chief musician, a contemplation of the sons of Korah. Chief musician, either like the maestro of the choir, or some father said it is to the Lord Jesus Christ. St. Augustine comments on the title Son of Korah and he said 
This psalm is addressed to the sons of Korah, as its title shows. Korah is equivalent to the word boldness. And we find in the gospel that our Lord Jesus Christ was crucified in the place of a skull. So he's trying to connect boldness with skull. It is clear then that this son is sung to the sons of his passion. So he says the sons of Korah means the sons of the passion, suffering. Now we have on this point a most certain and most evident testimony from St. Paul. Because that at the time when the church was suffering under the persecutions of the Gentiles, he quoted from hence a verse. So when the church during the time of St. Paul was persecuted, St. Paul quoted in Romans chapter 8 a verse from the psalm, verse 22, to insert by way of consolation and encouragement to patients. Verse 22 that he caught, Yet for your sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. So this verse you will find it in Romans. Uh, when St. Paul and all the Christian in the New Covenant in the, new, in the first century were suffering for the name of Christ, he quoted this verse. That's why St. Augustine said, since the title, it is contemplation of the sons of Korah. And Korah means boldness. Boldness refers to the skull, and Jesus Christ was crucified in Golgotha, the place of the skull then we, the persecuted Christian, we can identify with this psalm. Especially, St. Paul, when he was persecuted, and the Christian of the New Testament were persecuted, he quote verse 22 from this psalm in Romans chapter 8. St. Augustine continues and says, the title then is not simply to the sons of Korah, but for understanding to the sons of Korah. So this psalm is written, and there is a hint in this psalm, they should understand in this psalm is written in a prophetic way to indicate the persecution that the Christian will suffer for the name of Christ. That's what she, they should understand, to the understanding, to the sons of Kor. This son is a hymn expressive, not of an individual, but of national feeling, expression of the whole nation together. It speaks of the nation of Israel in a season of great defeat, calling out to God for rescue. And in the prophetic way, it, is, it refers to the persecuted Christian. It is not certain who was the writer of this psalm, nor when it was written, or to what time it belongs. Some believe it was composed during the Babylonian captivity, and it gives a description of the church and people of God during this time. Others believe it's written by David the prophet. And David wrote it in a prophetic way. He speaks about the future time during like the time of captivity in Babylon, Babylon or representing the church of the New Testament. And why they said it's written by David because they connect this psalm with Psalm 60. And suppose that the occasion of both psalms was the Edomite raid upon Judah while David was occupied with his campaign against 
Ammonites and Syrians. So they said these two Psalms were written during this time. Other commentators believe that the Psalm could be applied to the New Testament. As I told you, like verse 22, is cited by St. Paul in Romans 8, verse 36, and is applied to his time as descriptive of the suffering state and the condition of the church then. Other said this psalm refers to the time of Antiochus Epiphanius and to the persecution which occurred during him or his reign during the Maccabees time. But for sure, we don't know who is the author of the psalm. Psalm is 26 verses. From verse 1 to 8, the psalmist describes the mercies of God. From verse 9 to 16, the psalmist points out their present miserable state. From verse 17 to 22, they remained faithful in spite of all the persecution and suffering. And 23 to 26, the psalmist called upon the Lord for deliverance. Let's start from verse 1. We have heard with our ears, O God, our fathers have told us, the deeds you did in their days, in days of old. So this message, this verse, points out to the importance of oral tradition we have heard with our ears as means of preserving the memory of the past. Much of the early history of Israel was preserved by oral tradition for a very long period before it was committed to writing. So the church or Israel being in distress calls to mind the past mercies and works of God for his people in order to encourage her faith and hope. Like when I go through difficult time, I call to remembrance what God had done with me during all these previous years. And I take from this experience hope and encouragement to endure the current uh, suffering. The psalmist received a special legacy from his fathers. Our fathers told us from their elder generation. Those fathers were careful to tell their children what God did in generation past. And it is our responsibility as parents to share with our children what God has done with us in the past. It is the duty of the fathers to present to their children the experience of their life with God. Then he said, we heard with our ears. Definitely the person hears with his ears. So why he did not say we heard? Why he said we heard with our ears? This expression denotes that they were listening with great attention, with great pleasure, and they reflect and and. We, we heard with our ears reflect the magnitude of their interest to listen and to know about what God had done with them in the past. Papias, which, who is a disciple of St. John the Evangelist and companion of St. Polycarp, says, With no hesitation, I add what I have learned and received of interpretations from the elder, which I am sure of their soundness. So he said, what I heard, also it is not written, but since these fathers are trustworthy, 
then what I heard from them is very, very important. He added, for I do not believe that what I learn from the books would benefit me as much as what I get from the live voice. Like until now, when we read, even when we read the scripture, unless someone interprets the scripture for us, or we go to early church fathers to understand the scripture, many times the scripture is difficult to understand. That's what he said. I do not believe that what I learn from the books would benefit me as much as what I get from the live voice. Those of the elder generation told the psalmist of the great work God did when he drove out the Canaanites and planted Israel in the promised land and he gave it to the descendant of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. As we read in verse 2. In verse 2 he starts to say what he heard from uh, the fathers. He said, you drove out the nations with your hand. Nations here, Canaan. But them, Israel, you planted. You afflicted the people and cast them out. You afflicted the people, the Canaanites, and cast them out. You spread the children of Israel in their place. So Israel owed its position of Canaan not to its own courage, but to God's help. If God did not help them, they wouldn't be able actually to take the promised land. So the many complete victories which Israel obtained over the Canaanites under the command of Joshua were not to be attributed to themselves, nor could they claim the glory of them. It's only through God's. And here there is metaphor of planting, but them, Israel, you planted. So the metaphor of planting is frequently applied to the establishment of Israel in Canaan. Israel here is compared to a tree which struck root but spread its branches far and wide which means God assigned them a fixed and permanent residence. بالعربي حطمت شعوبا ومددتهم فرشتهم كده مددتهم cast them out so it would also mean that God made them increase multiplied them spread them over the land as vine spreads the hands of God drove out heathen nations to plant his own people in a spiritual meaning, how can I apply this verse to myself? This is God's plan for the life of his children. He uprooted every corrupt nature from my heart and set and planted his kingdom, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, inside me. Verse 3. For they, Israel, did not gain possession of the land by their own sword, nor did their own arm save them. But it was your right hand, your arm, and the light of your countenance, because you favored them, because you liked them. So, the thought of the preceding verse is still further emphasized. He said in verse 2, you are the one who uprooted Canaan and planted Israel. So the order establishment 
in the promised land holy to God. God who had driven out the nations in the days of their fathers. God who had established his people peacefully, peacefully in the new land. Also, the same God is able to intervene now during the time of their affliction and to save them. Uh, there are many stories in, in the book of Joshua that actually indicate that the conquest in the days of Joshua, Israel did nothing. God alone did the work. Let me give you two examples. When they crossed the Jordan River and God split the Jordan River to be a dry land, what did Israel do? Nothing. It's 100% God's hand. And the same with Jericho. When they actually pro, pro, make a procession around Jericho for seven days and the last day seven times, and the walls of Jericho uh, knocked down, what did they do? Nothing. So we can see here, it is not their sword, it's not their arm, it's not their armies, it's not their weapons, it is God. So, yes, there were other times when Israel had to fight. But their fighting would have accomplished nothing without the right hand of God on their behalf. So, it is always important to have the face and favor of God for them as having the right hand or arm of the Lord. He said, your right hand, your arm, your light. In the same way, our victory in the spiritual warfare without grace of God will be defeated. These battles happened long before the generation of the time of the psalmist. If this psalm was composed during the Babylonian ca captivity, so the time of Joshua is actually long before the time of the Babylonian captivity. So the fathers here spoke not only of what they personally had experienced of God, but also they also taught what God did with many generations before. Maybe we can share with our children our experience, our lived experience with God. But here they said the experience of their grand grand grandfathers many generations to their children it's our duty to share the experience with our older generation with our children who is the right hand and who is the arm and what is the light here saint augustine says the right hand is thy power the arm is the Son himself. So the arm is the Son, Jesus Christ, and the right hand is the power. And the light of your countenance, what means this? But that thou were present with them. So when he said the, the light means the existence of God, he said three things here. It was your right hand, which is the power of God, your arm, your son, and the light of your countenance, the presence of God with them. He said, St. Augustine, in miracles of such a sort, of thy presence, of such a sort, thy presence were perceived. When God actually split the Jordan River, when the walls of Jericho fall down, definitely God was there. For when God's presence with us appears by any miracle. We don't see his face with our own eyes, but by the effect of the miracles, he intimates to man his presence. When we see the Israelites did not see the countenance of God, but when God split the Jordan liver, they knew God is in their midst. Verse 4, You are my king, O God. Command victories for Jacob. 
Here the psalmist used a singular number, my king, although this psalm is expression of the nation of Israel. But he used a singular number as expressive of his own feeling, though he doubtless means also to speak in the name of the nation of Israel. By saying, you are my king, the psalmist acknowledged no other king but God, no other absolute Lord and Master. And the remembrance of the past gives confidence for the present and the future. God's strength must still avail for the deliverance of his people, and in him, in God alone, they trust. And he said, command the victories for Jacob. Being a king, he has the right to command. All what God needs to do is just to command. And when he said command victories for Jacob, Jacob is used here to denote the descendants of Jacob or the people of God. Verse 5, through you we will push down our enemies. Through your name we will trample those who rise up against us. Al Arabi, imkin adak fi English fi tarjama push down, bika nan tah mudayqina. As I will explain, uh, as animal with horn, and he can actually push down their enemies. Uh, we will push down our enemies. The metaphor is taken from animals pushing with their horns those that oppose them and in self-defense. Actually, there is allusion to Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 17. His glory is like a firstborn bull and his horns like the horns of the wild ox. Together with them, he shall push the people to the end of the earth. So the psalmist here was referring to what's written in Deuteronomy 33, verse 17. The Lord's name served instead of weapons and enabled those who used the Lord's name to crush their enemies. He said, in your name, through you we will push down our enemies. Through your name we will trample those who rise against us. That's why in spiritual warfare, when Satan attacks us, Call on the name of the Lord. My Lord Jesus Christ, help me. My Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen me. One can work wonders when in union and communion with God. In his name, believers fight with their spiritual enemies that rise up against them, like sin, like Satan. And through the power of the Lord, we will trample them down. Verse 6, for I will not trust in my bow, nor shall my sword save me. So the author of the psalm again speaks as expressing his own feeling and stating the grounds of his confidence and hope. At the same time, he doubtless expresses the feeling of people and speaks in their name. He assured God that their faith was in him only and in his power, not in their own strength or skill, not in the bow or any other weapon. They, under God's guidance, pushed out the heathen and gained their land, not by skill of weapons or powers of arms, but by the power of God alone. Therefore, they will not rely upon outward confidence of which other men make such boast, but only upon the omnipotence of God. Verse 7, But you have saved us from our enemies 
and have put to shame those who hated us. Again, he goes back to previous experience. The help comes with the visible enemies as well as with the spiritual enemy. And although this psalm refers to physical enemies or visible enemies, but we can apply it to our spiritual enemy. St. John Chrysostom says, Not in weapons do I trust, that is not in my strength, nor in my righteousness, but in the mercy of God. Verse 7 carries double action of God. How come double action? He said, you have saved us from our enemies. That's one action. And you have put to shame those who hated us. So you saved us and put to shame our enemies. He is blessing his people and defeating his enemies. Therefore, the psalmist is expecting God to grant deliverance from enemies and give them success. God has been the object of their praises in the past, and to him they will give thanks continually, as he said in verse 8, In God we boast all day long and praise your name forever. In God we boast all day long and praise your name forever. So God has been the object of their praises in the past, and to him they will give thanks continually. All day long means it is not a momentary or temporary expression of the psalmist feeling, but it will be a habitual and constant service of praising God. St. John Chrysostom shares his thoughts on verse 8 and says, This after all is our glory, this our boast. Our glory and our boast is in God. In this we take pride. In the company of everyone, in the presence of everyone, we take pride in God. Not for the fact that we have a great and wonderful city. We don't take pride in this. Not that we were the first to overcome. No, we don't take pride in that. Nor that we prevail by bodily strength. No. But because we have God who is true. In this we boast. Not only when you help us, but even when you abandon us. Because as we're going to see in, in next verses, how they felt abandonment from God. But in spite of this abandonment, they still boast and take glory of God all day long. All day long means every moment, even when God bless us or when we feel abandoned by God, we will continue to praise him. This, you see, is the meaning of all day long. Nothing can parallel this boasting. Then after verse 8, Selah, because from verse 9, he will go into a different uh, expression of their feeling right now, how they feel defeated and abandoned. So, a pause comes in, uh, a pause comes in, Selah means a pause, to reflect, to meditate. So, comes in here and properly. Verse 9. But you have cast us off and put us to shame and you do not go out with our armies. Now he is explaining in, in, from verse eight to, uh, 1 to 8 the past experiences of the mercies and the loving kindness of God. From verse 9 they express what they are going through right now. How they feel that God abandons them. God forsook them. So, these verses are a powerful and bitter complaint. The Psalms begins to contrast the past glories of the nation's history with its present sadness and distress. He now stated his great present need. They felt that God did not fight for Israel. 
Therefore, they were without hope in battle. Sometimes in our spiritual uh, warfare, we feel we are defeated. What I am, what, why I am struggling with this sin for a long time? Why God is not fighting for me? Why he is giving me in to this sin? God has seemed to cast them off, has put them to shame, allowed them to be defeated, slain, and carried into captivity. He no longer go out with their armies to secure them victory over their enemies, but waits distant and cover them with confusion. St. Augustine, on verse 9, he says, For there was a time when Christians were persecuted, when in every place they were outcasts, when in every place it used to be said, he is Christian as if it conveyed an insult and reproach. Where then is he our God and our King who commands salvation unto Jacob? Where is he who did all those works which our fathers have told us? Where is he who is hereafter to do all those things which he revealed unto us by his Spirit? Is he changed? Why God is forsaking us? Why he is allowing all this persecution and suffering for the Christian? No, he did not change. You remember in the title for understanding, the sons of Korah for understanding. So San Augustine here, these things are done in order to understanding for the sons of Korah. They want to know that Sometimes God actually allow us to suffer. So this suffering will be participation in his suffering and also will be participation in his glory. So we ought to understand something of the reason, as St. Paul said, if we suffer with him, we'll be glorified with him. Why he has willed we should suffer all these things in the meantime. St. Peter in his letter says, he who suffers in the flesh sees from sin. Verse 10, you make us turn back from the enemy and those who hate us have taken a spoil for themselves. So what come upon the people, people of Israel, was not because of the strength of their enemies, but mainly because God has cast them off for some time. And that scripture implies not a single defeat, but a somewhat continued period of depression, during which several armies have been beaten, several battles lost, multitudes slain, great numbers carried away captive. In verse 11, you have given us up like sheep intended for food. And have scattered us among the nations. So the psalmist understood that for Israel. Israel, the nation of the covenant with God. Uh, victory or defeat was in the hand of God. From verse eight, 1 to 8, he said, Our victory because your hand, your arm, your light of your countenance. And now their defeat, again, God allowed it. You have given us up like sheep intended for food. Therefore, if they were defeated, scattered, sold into slavery, made a reproach, it was because God's hand was behind it in some way. God cast them away. And I want you to notice the repetition of the word you. You have given us. You sell your people for the next to nothing and are not 
enriched by selling them. That's verse 12. You sell us for the next enemy, but you sell us for free, and you are not enriched by selling them. So the Lord seemed to hand over his people to any nation who might choose to make war upon Israel. You sell your people for next to nothing. The whole nation is regarded as delivered over to the will of their enemies. To nothing means no good result was understandable from all the miseries of Israel. You are not glorified by selling us to the enemies. You did not actually, or you are not being glorified when you sold us to our enemies for free. That's from the perception of the psalmist, of course. So far as the psalmist could discern, the Lord's name did not receive any honor from the sorrows of his people. They were given away to their enemies as if they were of so little value for nothing and not to be worth the ordinary price of slaves. Even the price of slaves they did not get. And the Lord did not care to gain by them so long as they suffer. As if the focus here, the people should suffer, even if there is no gain. As if the psalmist is saying, if God had been glorified by our wretchedness, maybe we can justify it and we can endure it patiently. But it was the reverse. The name of God was blasphemed. The Lord's name has been despised by the insulting heathen who counted the overthrow of Israel to be defeat of God himself. As he said in verse 13, you make us a reproach to our neighbors, a scorn and a derision to those all around us. So here the psalmist, from his perception, is attributing to God human motive and feeling. Of course, God is above this human motive. As though the surrender of his people, when God make his people defeated, might have seemed more justifiable if God had received some equivalent for them. If God actually gets some honor, that is how the psalmist is thinking. If God may get some honor from our suffering, it makes sense. But the psalmist is saying, you did not get honor and you are suffer. Then for whose benefit is all of this? But on the same day, way, that could be considered as a rebuke addressed to the people as well. How come? On account of that God seeks no benefit for himself out of their tribulation. It's very clear, God not seeking any benefit out of their tribulation. God did not sell them to their enemies anticipating price or profit. Then why God is delivering them? For sure it is for their edification, for eternal salvation, for their glory, even if they cannot see it right now. If we suffer with him, we'll be glorified with him. So the meaning here or the understanding that we should get here, God is getting nothing from our suffering. Rather, his name is reproached. Then why he allows the suffering? Because it is the way of glory, for our glory. So the ultimate actually reason behind this suffering is our glory. God wants us to be glorified with him. So they would be reproached not so much as weak and powerless themselves, but rather as having a weak and powerless God. That's how the nation is saying. 
Not Israel is weak and powerless, but their God is weak and powerless. And the word the neighbors here refer to the surrounding nations. The word the neighbors, you make us a reproach to our neighbors, a scorn and a derision to those all around us. So they were reproached, scorned, dreaded as forsaken by God. Surrounding nations treated them with contempt. They no longer fear them, no longer the nations fear Israel or respect them as having nothing to entitle them to respect. These nations point to their fate as a parable of people abandoned by their God. And they become the subject of mocking songs. That's why he said, a shaking of the head among the people. As we read in verse 14, you make us a byword among the nations a shaking of the head among the people. So the nations actually, the, the word by word means a parable. So they used Israel as an example of people abandoned by their God. And Israel became the subject of mocking songs and the shaking of head. Shaking of head, also we read it about Jesus Christ during the time of crucifixion. So St. Augustine is saying, a shaking of the head by way of insult. The, if you read about the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ, they spoke with their lips, they shook their, the head. This they did to the Lord. This to all his saints also. They did to all his saints, whom they were able to pursue, to lay hold of to mock, to betray, to afflict, and to slay. During the time of persecution, that's what they did to the martyrs. Verse 15, we will stop tonight at verse 16. Just two more verses. My dishonor is continually before me. My dishonor is continually before me. And the shame of my face has covered me. So the psalmist here is represented as the head of, of the people of Israel and expresses the sense of disgrace. My dishonor is continually before me. He is identifying himself with the people and he speaks of the nation, national disgrace as his own disgrace and shame. The word shame here, the conviction and the evidence of his disgrace is constantly present with him. My dishonor is content, continually before me. Verse 16, the shame of my face has covered me because of the voice of him who reproaches and reviles, because of the enemy and the avenger. So, the psalmist was brought low, not only because of the defeat and disgrace suffered from their enemies, but worse than the sins that it was because God had abandoned Israel or perhaps was against them. So, the disgrace and the shame was more because the feeling of abandonment by God or God is against them. The misery of Israel was so great that eventually the very name Jew become a byword. They say it's a Jew, as insult. The shame of my face has covered me. He felt before God that the divine abandonment was well deserved and before man that he and his people were wicked and disgraceful indeed now that heavenly help was gone. So before God, there is divine abandonment. And before men, they were perceived as wicked and disgraceful because the heavenly help has gone away. Also, the voice of him who reproaches and reviles 
because the enemy because of the enemy and avenger so that does not only reproach him this voice not reproaching Israel only which he could bear but they blaspheme God because of them is something he cannot uh, tolerate as if he is saying if they are reproaching me I can bear it endure it but they are blaspheming against you I cannot tolerate this the reproaches of the heathen were most commonly blasphemous since they consider they consisted very mainly of mocking taunting expression against the God of Israel the reproach which the enemy and the Avenger cast upon them was absolute blasphemy against God there is no trouble more grievous to a good soul than to hear blasphemy and dishonor done to God I will stop here tonight but I don't want you because all these verses speak about how God abandons them so I don't want you to get the impression that the psalmist lost complete hope in God he's just expressing how he feels but the last two verses actually uh, last uh, four verses there is still hope and trust in God because of his mercy not because we deserve when he said awake why do you sleep O Lord arise don't cast us forever why do you hide your face and forget our affliction and our oppression for our soul is bowed down to the dust our body clings to the ground arise for our help and redeem us for your mercy's sake he did not say redeem us because we are worthy so he still have trust in the mercies of God in the long suffering of God in his patience in his loving kindness to deliver them just I don't want you to leave tonight with this negative complaint but the psalmist concluded as as usual in the Psalms is concluded with confidence hope uh, in the loving kindness in the mercies in the compassion of God glory be to God forever and ever amen Trike, io che agio pneumatiche in incai, sosion astonia on on amin tenoce volengo e moje open choice is os bev, it over neste vineri ego in mene un mehmen ego shine pef soten fenen novi, sotiem monu on ainan a kichit feris and moisis timet o even temel she said the timet hello and te a copino and a in temazo i katet sot bente david ti sofia in te solo monti epne man barakliton fi et avi ejeni aposto shoi sev e are eb on khenem eptahu erat fem peniot eptayot en arshi eref se baba avai Badros tempeniotin ebes kobos ava Yusef ev notin te ev et agrohi jenno Trono senan mi shenrom Neman seyo eniri nikon en teftevei Enno gaji tiro sapesit enno et shalav gen Tobe be Christo seri egon tefken enno vinan evol gen uhiri nikatab ev neshtin Ay kiriele ison kiriele ison Kyrie evlogi sonami nismo eroes mo eroes timetania koni evolgo empies be Christos ben nuti amin esesho O King of Peace grant us your peace establish for us your peace forgive us our sins for yours is the power glory blessing and majesty forever amen O Lord make us worthy to pray thankfully our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Christ Jesus our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now, love of God the Father, the grace of his only begotten Son, our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, 
communion gift of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Go in peace. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. And with your spirit. هنصلي صلاة نص الليل وبعد كده سيدنا وزعلكم لهم البركة تفضل نصلي مع بعض بسم الله أبو الابن وروح القدس الإله الواحد أمين كريليسون يا رب ارحم يا رب ارحم يا رب بارك أمين المجد للآب والابن وروح القدس الآن وكل أوان ولا ظهر الدور كلها أمين اللهم اجعلنا مستحقين أن نقول بالشكر أبانا الذي في السماوات Let us give thanks to the beneficent and merciful God for Nashkur Sana al Khirat Rahum Allah. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your great mercy. Erhamni, Allah, Ka'azim, Rahmetak. قوم يا بني النور لنسبح رب قوات لكي ينم علينا بخلاص نفوسنا عندما نقف أمام جسديا انزع من عقولنا نوم الغفلة عطنا يا رب يغزى لكي نفهم كيف نقف أمام وقت الصلاة نرسل لك إلى فوق تمجيد اللائق ونفوس بغفران خطايانا الكثيرة المجد لك يا محب البشر هبارك الرب يا عبيد الرب القائمين في بيت الرب في ديار بيت إلهنا في الليل ارفع أيديكم أيها القديسون وبارك الرب يبارككم الرب من صهيون الذي خلق السماء والأرض المجد لك يا محب البشر فاليد نتوسلي أمامك يا رب كقولك فهمني لتدخل البطيء إلى حضرتك يا رب ككلماتك أحيني طفيت شفتاي الصبح إذا ما علمتني حقوقك لساني يجيب أقوالك لأن جميع وصاياك عادلة لتكون يدك لتخلصني لأن اشتهيت وصاياك اشتقت إلى خلاصك يا رب وناموسك هو تلاوتي تحيا نفسي وتسبحك أحكامك تعينني ضللت مثل الخروف الضال فاطلب عبدك فإني لوصاياك لم أنسى المجد للآب والابن وروح القدس الآن وكل أوان ظهر الدور كلها أمين المجد للآب والابن وروح القدس منذ الآن وإلى أبد الأباد كلها أمين المجد لك يا محب البشر الصالح السلام لأمك العذراء مع جميع قدسيك المجد لك أيها الثالوث القدوس ارحمنا فليقم الله ليتبدد جميع أعداؤه وليهرب من قدام وجهه كل مبغض اسمه قدوس أما شعبك يا رب فليكم بالبركة ألوف ألوف ربوات ربوات الصعن إراتك يا رب افتح الشفتية ولينطق فم بتسبيحك أمين هللويا بشويصينان بشويصينان أمين هللويا أخي نفران مفيوت لمبشيري نمب ابن ما يثواب ونوت نوت أمين زك سابة ريكا أيوك يا أقدم ماتي كانين كأيك إستوس أنصان أمين تسبحات صلوات الخدمة الأولى من صلاة نصف الليل المبارك من المسيح ملك وإلهي رجعنا في الإختياري ثلاثين مزامير معلمنا داود النبي بركات علينا آمين
زكسا سيو ثيو سيمون قدوس 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 فصل بشارة الإنجيل المقدس المعلم ناماري متى البشير تلميذ الطاهر بركات علينا أمين Shout the words of the virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open the two eyes, but he said, He said unto you, Very I said, Do not know you watch therefore, for you not, do not know the end of the day, nor the hour which the Son of Man is coming. Glory be to God forever. Amen. May the saying of God be fulfilled in peace. To know the Mokub of Christos and because of the Nazos and the Bnumma is Oweb, Jaki Axoti and Monainan. Hail with the Chetan, behold, the bridegroom is coming at midnight. Blessed is the servant whom he finds watching, but he who finds sleeping and worthy with him. Therefore, take heed, O my soul, that you may not fall into deep sleep and you may cast out into the kingdom. But watch and cry out, saying, Holy, holy, holy are you, O God, for the sake of the Theotokos, have mercy on us. O my soul, be mindful of that awesome day and wake up and light your lamb with the oil of joy, for you don't know when the voice will call upon you, saying, Behold, the bridegroom is coming, so take heed, my soul, not to fall asleep. Lest you stand outside knocking like the five foolish virgins, but watch into eating that you may meet Christ the Lord with rich oil, and he may grant you the wedding of his true and heavenly glory. You are the rampart of our salvation, O Theotokos, the virgin, the mighty and the pregnant of our first, abolish the counsel of adversaries and transform the sorrow of your servant into joy, fortify our city and defend our governors and intercede for the peace of the world for you are our hope both the auto Just as you were with your disciples, O Savior, and gave them peace, graciously come also and be with us and grant us your peace and save us and deliver our souls. Whenever we stand in your holy sanctuary, we are considered standing in heaven. O Theotokos, you are the gate of heaven. Open for us the gate of mercy. We ask you, O Lord, to hear us, have mercy on us, and forgive us our sins. Amen. Kriya lai son, kriya lai son, kriya lai son. Kriya lai son, kriya lai son, kriya lai son. Kriya lai son, kriya lai son, kriya lai son. Kriya lai son. Kriya lai son, kriya lai son, kriya lai son. Kriya lai son, kriya lai son, kriya lai son. Kriya lai son, kriya lai son, kriya lai son. Kriya lai son, kriya lai son, kriya lai son. Kriya lai son, kriya lai son, kriya lai son. Holy, holy, holy Lord of Sabaoth, Kudus, Kudus, Kudus. O Lord, make us worthy to pray thankfully, our Father who art in heaven. Prayer and praises of the second watch of the blessed midnight hour offered to Christ my God and my King, beseeching him to forgive my sins from Psalms our Father, David the Prophet. May his blessings be with us all. Amen.
زوك ساس يوس يوس يمون قدوس 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 فصل بشارة الإنجيل المقدس لمعلمنا ماري لوقا البشيرة الميز الطاهر بركات علينا أمين brought an alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head and kissed her, his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the first who had invited him saw this, he spoke within himself saying, This man if he were a prophet would have known who and what manner of woman this is who touched him for she is a sinner. And Jesus answered and said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. And he said, Master, say it. There was a certain creditor at two debtors, one on 500 denarii and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, for they forgive them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him more? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave more. And he said unto him, You are rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Do you see this woman? I entered into your house, and you gave me no water for my feet. But she has washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. You gave me no kiss with this woman. Since the time I came and has not ceased to kiss my feet, my head with oil you do not anoint. But this woman has anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore I say unto you, Her sins which are many are forgiven, for she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. And he said unto her, Your sins are forgiven. And those who sat to eat with him began to say within themselves, Who is this who forgives sins also? And he said to them, In your faith I say, Do you go in peace? Glory be to God forever. Amen. May the saying of God be fulfilled in peace. Worship you, Christ our God, with your good Father and the Holy Spirit. For you have come and saved us, have mercy upon us. Give me, O Lord, many fountains of tears as you gave in the past the sinful woman. Make me worthy to wash your feet, which liberated me from the path of straying, and to offer to you a precious fragrant oil and gain through repentance of pure life, so that I may hear that voice full of joy. Your faith has saved you. يا من أنت وحدك بلا خطية أنا مع نفسي المسكينة بتخشع قبل أن يأتي الانقضاء وخلصني كينين كأين كأستوسي ونستوني ونقامين The heavens bless you full of grace the bride who was never married and we too glorify you in comprehensible giving birth O Theotokos the mother of mercy and salvation intercede for the salvation of our soul كينين كأين كأستوسي ونستوني ونقامين أيها الملك السماء المعزر والحق الحاضر في كل مكان والمال الكل كان الصالحات ومعطي الحياة هلما تفضل وحل فينا وطهرنا من كل دانة سأيها الصالح وخلص نفوسنا زوك سابت ريكا ايوكا اجيب نفماتي جوس اجي وار ويدو لسايبر جوس سيبر ان جيب دم پيس جريشس تيكم اولسو ان بي وداس ان جرانت اس يور پيس ان سيب اس ان دليبر اور سو كاني كاني كاستو سيون استونيون ونامي ايها ما وقفنا في عيكا لك المقدس نحصد كالقيام في السماء يا ويت لانت يا باب السماء افتحي لنا باب الرحمة نسألك يا رب اسمعنا وارحمنا اغفر لنا خطي يا نامين كريا ليسون 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 Kiria lai song, kiria lai song, kiria lai song. Kiria lai song, kiria lai song, kiria lai song. Kiria lai song, kiria lai song, kiria lai song. Kiria lai song, kiria lai song, kiria lai O Lord, make us worthy to pray thankfully, our Father who art in heaven. Prayer and praises of the third watch of the blessed midnight hour offered to Christ my God and my King beseeching him to forgive my sins from Psalms our father David the prophet may his blessings be with us all Amen
زوكساس يو ثيوس يمون قدوس 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 فصل بشارة الإنجيل المقدس لمعلمنا ماري لوقا البشيرة الميز الطاهر بركاته علينا أمين Do not fear, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell what you have and give alms. Provide yourselves money bags which do not grow old, a treasure in the heavens that does not fail, where no thief approaches nor moth corrupts. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Let your loins also be girded and your lamps burning. And you yourselves be like men who wait for their master when he will return from the wedding, that when he comes and knocks, they may open to him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom their master will, when he comes, will find them watching. Assuredly, I say to you that he will gird himself. Now have them sit down to eat, and will come and serve them. And if he shall come in the second watch, or come in the third watch and will find themselves blessed are those servants who would know this that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come he would have watched and allowed his house to be broken into you therefore be ready for also for the son of man is coming in an hour when you do not think then peter said to him lord do you speak this parable only to us or to all people and the lord said who then is that faithful and wise steward whom his master will make ruler of his household to give them their portion of food in due season blessed is that servant whom his master when he comes will find so doing truly i say to you that he will make him ruler over all that he has but if that servant says in his heart my master is delaying his coming and begins to beat the men servants and maidens and made men servants and maidens to eat and drink and be drunk the master of that servant will come in a day when he is not looking for him and in an hour when he is not aware and will cut him into an appointment his portion with the unbelievers glory be to god forever i mean may the saying of god be fulfilled in peace to know the mug of christos and because in our thoughts and in the mouth of web jaki aksot yamunaynan with a compassionate eye, O oh Lord, look on my weakness, for surely my life will end, and in my deeds I shall have no salvation. Therefore I beseech you, O oh Lord, with a merciful eye, look on my weakness, my humility, my, my poverty, and my sojourn, and save me. As the judge is present, take heed, O oh my soul, awake and consider that awesome hour, for in the day of judgment there will be no mercy on those who were not merciful. Therefore have compassion on me, O oh Savior, for you alone are the lover of mankind. O oh, the reasonable gate of life, the honor Theotokos, deliver from hardship those who in faith take refuge in you, so that we may glorify your immaculate birth of Christ for the salvation of our souls. O heavenly King, that converts the spirit of truth to his present all places and fills all the treasure of good things in the life, give our grace to the common dwell us. And purify us from all the fire, men of good one, and save our souls. Zukse betri ke eyo ke agyob nevmati. Just as you were with your disciples, O Savior, and gave them peace, graciously come also and be with us and grant us your peace, and save us and deliver our souls. Kenin ke ai ke estosion astonion on amin. Stand in your holy sanctuary, we are considered standing in heaven, O Theotokos, you are the gate of heaven, open for us the gate of mercy. We ask you, O Lord, to hear us, have mercy on us, and forgive us our sins, I mean, Kriya lai son, 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 Holy, holy, holy Lord of Sabaoth. O Lord, make words to pray thankfully, our Father who art in heaven. O Lord and Master Jesus Christ, Ayyuhu Sayyid Rabbi Yasu al-Masih ibn Allah. Have mercy on us, O oh God, and have mercy on us. Arhamna, ya Allah, summa arhamna. O 
Oh Lord, make us to pray thankfully, our Father who art in heaven. 